we like to name things that have kind of unique properties. Uh, rhombus is an example of that. So it is a quadrilateral, but what makes it special is that it has all four sides congruent to each other. So four equal sides. So I'm gonna go ahead and mark that on my diagram here. And then I'm gonna do that old trick that you've seen me do over and over again, which is simply to cut this into triangles. So now that we know that those are triangles there, I'm also gonna go ahead and mark this side here, the shared side as congruent. So now I know that these two triangles are congruent to each other. And because they're isosceles, um, I in fact also know that all four of these angles are congruent to each other. So we've got that triangle ABD is congruent to triangle CBD. And I'm gonna mark up all of those congruent angles there. And in fact, we also know that um, angle A is congruent to angle C. It's not that important right now, so I'm not going to mark it down, but I'll keep that in mind. Might add it back in later. And now I'm gonna do the same exact thing, except this time I'm going to break up the rhombus vertically. And you're gonna notice that we get a lot of the same relationships, but um, marking this down, we know that these sides are congruent to each other. And also, that these angles here have to be congruent to each other. And again, that side, side, side relationship tells me that the two triangles are also congruent to each other. So all of these angles are congruent. So in this case, triangle ABC is congruent to triangle ADC. And both of these were because of the side, side, side triangle congruence postulate. All right, so where do we go from here? So we have this cool information, but I've cut it up to where it doesn't even really look that much like a rhombus anymore. Well, what we can do is we can add all of that into the same diagram. So combine both those diagonals together. So what we end up finding now is that if we look at this, it looks super symmetrical, right? Well, it turns out that it really is. So what we wind up with is if we call these triangle one, two, three, and four, well, I have angle, side, angle, angle, side, angle, angle, side, angle. I, all four of these triangles are congruent to each other. Well, that's perfect because that means all their parts also have to be congruent to each other. So I can mark those up as well. Um, this part corresponds to this part here. We've got that this piece corresponds to this piece here. And then that means that these angles here have to be congruent. And since they're also a linear pair or supplementary, we also know that they must be 90 degrees. And so we can summarize all of this information. Um, and we're going to write this down um, in pretty mathematical terms. But if you can understand the diagram and understand where it came from, which is the purpose of me going through this whole thing, um, even if you forget these definitions, you're going to be able to figure it out. And so what happened here? Well, most of this stuff had to do with the diagonals. And what we end up with is we end up with diagonals that bisect each other and are perpendicular. So we can write that really neatly as the diagonals are perpendicular bisectors. In addition to that, we also see that the diagonals bisect the interior angles. And then there's one last thing that's a little less obvious, but if you just consider this angle here and this angle here, well, if we look at BC and AD, they are intersected by the transversal BD. And so what we wind up with is these two orange, orange angles are alternate interior angles and they're congruent. Therefore, these sides here must be parallel. And then by the exact same logic, since this angle here is congruent to this angle here, those are alternate interior angles for the transversal BD and the lines DC and 
AB, so those must be parallel to each other. And the easiest way to write all of that is just that the opposite sides, I'm gonna make this bigger because there's so many properties, the opposite sides are parallel. And what that turns out to mean is that this is in fact a parallelogram. So that last part, again, might be one of those parts that can be a little bit tricky. Um, and so, you know, one, one suggestion is you could just redraw it with only the pieces that you're using. So those two angles, again, are congruent. Therefore, we end up with congruent alternate interior angles, which only happens if these two lines are parallel. So you can kind of compare that. Um, but the idea of breaking this up into triangles is that even if you forget any of these particular attributes, if you remember this part right here, especially that we have these four congruent right triangles with this rhombus, you can cut it up using those diagonals. Um, all of this information follows from there and you can solve just about any type of problem that you would need to if you just remember that part.